We're going to try to get this, uh, get this going as, as quickly as we can. Each candidate ha for the mayoral race has uh, three minutes to introduce themselves. And so I'm going to give them that time, and the timekeeper's got you. So you're closest to me. Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, come on up. Or are you going to do it from there? Okay. I don't know. It's up to you. Where do you want it? I can hear you, so why don't you stay okay. there? <laughs> it's the first time I've ever had a microphone on. I feel so special. Jeff Jones is my Sunday school teacher, and uh, yes, he does talk a long time. You ought to hear him pray. Um, my name is Elsie Thurman, and I just want to thank all of you for being here tonight and uh, taking part in this um, conversation about the future of our city. I want to focus my, my uh, time on what I hope to bring to this city, which is positive leadership for the city. Um, I am not a politician. I'm a CPA. I've spent my career in public accounting, working with large firms that were going public all the way to small mom and pop businesses that needed a succession plan for their business. Anybody that walked through my door knew that I was not gonna quit researching until I came up with a plan that was gonna help them. And that's the, that's the work ethic that I bring to the city. I've been on the city council for three years prior to that. I served as the chairman of the Long Range Planning Committee, a very rewarding activity. Um, we came up with a plan that we presented that was basically what's going to happen for the next five years. Um, I have really enjoyed my time on the council and I have learned a lot. I still have a lot to learn. Our city is well managed. We have um, a very solid budget. We have all kinds of plans for the next five and 10 years in terms of infrastructure, improvements in all of our departments, all 10 of our departments. And we have funding mechanisms in place that do not include increases in your property taxes. As mayor, there are challenges ahead and we will face those. I believe there's a new emerging role for the mayor. It will be my first priority as mayor and I believe it's to bring um, back um, uh, the, the sense of community that we have, the symbiotic relationship between the 11 POAs, the city, and the declarant. I believe that all of us want that kind of civility to come back. I will do everything I can to assist in this process, and I believe as the leader of the city, it's not my role, it's not my job, but I believe it's my responsibility to you. I look forward to answering your questions on all kinds of areas that I'm focused on, growth, water management, traffic, um, the ETJ, the extraterritorial jurisdiction, our infrastructure, our budget. I look forward to any of your questions. And again, I thank you for coming and I thank um, everyone who organized this event. It's amazing how many people are here. All right, thank you, and, and with that, Mr. Beeman, sure. you may introduce yourself. I appreciate everyone coming tonight and taking your time here. That's why we have such a great city, and when the community gets involved, that's what's gonna make our city great. With the talent we have in Horseshoe Bay, there's not a problem that we cannot solve. We're an unbelievable, rich city with a lot of talented people here. It's working together as a community. But my name is Donald Beeman. And for the past two years, I have been proudly serving as the president of the Horseshoe Bay Properties Owners Association. And now I am running for mayor for the city of Horseshoe Bay. I look forward to embracing the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead while protecting the quality of life that we've come to expect while living in Horseshoe Bay. I will lead the city administration <clears throat> with accountability and transparency. I have over 40 years of successful business management experience. During that time, I have worked with federal, state, and local regulatory agencies. I am a problem solver, trusted and respected in our community. Our community needs to prioritize essential city services that are desperately needed. Currently, our water storage system is meeting our needs, Lake Buchanan. However, the delivery system infrastructure is lacking. Many of you, especially in West, have complained of low water pressure. 
that is due directly to an aging infrastructure. As mayor, it is my obligation to be fair and impartial to all residents of Horseshoe Bay. I'm committed to listening while giving all the opportunity to express differences of opinion with respect. Thank you. Okay, thank you candidates for your introductions. I need to ask everyone as we go through the questions, just so I can get as many of these questions asked as possible, if we can hold our applause till the very end so we can get through as many of these as we can, I think that'll help. Um, otherwise, it shortens our time with getting the questions. I also wanna thank you all <coughs> for your questions. I've read through them all. Some of them um, are very similar to one another, so if I don't read yours, it's because I'm trying to cover the topic maybe with another question as we go forward. And so uh, the host had a few questions. I'm gonna start with those. And I hadn't thought about this until now, but uh, my mom would probably kill me if I didn't say ladies first. I mean, <coughs> Mr. Beeman, you, is that all right if I let her go first this yes. time? Okay. Yeah. You, get to, you get to respond, obviously, to each of these questions. Hey, I wanna I'm, make sure that's clear. I'm okay. here to enjoy the evening. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we will start in um, for the host questions, uh, the first one is uh, the Horseshoe Bay story. Uh, what brought you to Horseshoe Bay and what keeps you here? Well, thank you. Uh, what brought me to Horseshoe Bay 22 years ago was uh, just an unbelievable sense of community. The people here are friendly, they're nice. We couldn't believe that they waved to us when we passed them in the street. And what we found when we got here was that this is the most welcoming community, um, neighbors helping and supporting neighbors, friends who are here because every single person in Horseshoe Bay chose to be here. There are some amazing backgrounds in Horseshoe Bay. People have done amazing things, but once they get here, nobody cares anymore. They just want to enjoy whatever it is that they chose to do here. Um, some people are here to retire. Some people, I believe, have, it is, our, our community is changing. After COVID, a lot of people moved here because they realized that they didn't have to fight the traffic in Austin and other places, and so they're successfully working from home here. As these things happen, our city needs to pivot to address the needs of all of these people. The vision of Horseshoe Bay, though, has not changed for me. I still get the same feeling of home when I turn on 2147, when we've been on a trip that I got that first, those first few times that I visited here. Um, all of you make it so special for me. We have an amazing, amazing group of friends and um, we are all so fortunate to live in Horseshoe Bay. As the judge alluded to, uh, there are problems in, that we have to address. There are things that, we, that, that, that happen. There are always differences of opinion. But we are so fortunate in this, in this community, um, the, the blessings that we have and the, um, the, just the many things that all of us have to celebrate. So Horseshoe Bay is a very special, special place to me. I know it is to all of you as well. All right, thank you. Mr. Beeman. As far as bringing us into Horseshoe Bay, uh, it was a Valentine's Day trip in 2015 where Dave and I got a chance to get away for a weekend, and we didn't even have any plans other than coming up because her grandparents used to run and own a, a hotel on Lake Buchanan. That was our primary reason in getting away. Uh, while we came up, we decided to stop and stay here in Horseshoe Bay and enjoyed it, but we, we really just came for the fact to get away for a weekend. One afternoon when we were Driving early, we just came into Horseshoe Bay and we saw an open house sign and we weren't even looking as far as a market. And we went in and about three weeks later, I guess, we had bought our first home in March of 2015 in Horseshoe Bay. And it was really a great sanctuary for us to get away from a 60 to 70 hour work week. But we, we were fortunate and, uh, and first bought on the lake and we loved our lake home. and and we fell in love with the lake and the, and the natural beauty of the hill country 
and all the natural beauty of our hiking trails that we have here in Horseshoe Bay. But during that 15 years, there, well now I guess 18 and a half, we've developed such great friendships with so many folks here in Horseshoe Bay. We love our community and it's, it's, it's a great place to get to live. And we're very fortunate and blessed to be here. So really in a way God led us here because we weren't really looking and just seeing an open house sign, Debbie said, stop, I wanna take a look and Valentine's Day and her trip well, we stopped and looked at that open house, and three weeks later, we were buying it, and we moved here full-time in 2011. You know, lived in Horseshoe Bay and made that our permanent home since 2011. Thank you. All right, thank you, candidates. We're gonna go to the next question. Um, and so, it's gonna go to Mr. Beeman first, and the second question is, where do you stand supporting the new city hall? Good question. <laughs> my stance and where my viewpoint on the city hall that is proposed is that we need to look at it as a business decision. That's what I am, a business person that's always ran a business and looked at efficiencies and needs over wants and desires and what makes the city successful and financially sound. It was up to a vote and it was approved last year by the voters, I understand that. And whatever the voters approve, that's what a democratic society does. But myself, of what I brought up in being transparency, is that we do have aging infrastructure. Where do you put your needs if you're really going to work for the citizens and residents of Horseshoe Bay? So that's what I look at as transparency. We have a lot of needs and we're going to need capital and in, in investment in our infrastructure for a reliable delivery system of water to our residents in Horseshoe Bay. It's something that we need to look at. I think it needs to be revisited. That's the city council that will have that decision to make and whatever the city council decides and, and puts it up to a vote, I'm, I'm very democratic, but I think things need to be looked at and discussed on where do our financial cost and what do we spend our money on. That's, that's my whole goal right there is whatever the citizens want to do, but let's look at and look at financial priorities of what we need to invest in. So from that and even coming there, Horseshoe Bay is a home rule city in the charter, mayor weak, council strong. The mayor has no vote on city council. The mayor just is, is the parliamentary procedure just like we do at the Horseshoe Bay POA. I'm currently president, call the meeting to order. We have board of directors that are the same as the city council. My role is the same as the mayor. And from that standpoint, the mayor's job in the city, actually number one, is to look at the city operation and be the chairman of the board, work with the city manager, which is a similar type job as our executive director of the POA. And with my years of, uh, in a business experience and managing, and also I was an accounting major, but I also ran the businesses and looked at all the expenses that we had for a company and that's what our role as mayor that I will look at is to see that we have a very, very well run, efficient city operation and then also with 40 years of experience I think I can be a good mentor for our, our current city manager. Jeff, very nice young fella, but 40 years I think gives me a little opportunity to help mentor him to his role. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Beeman. Uh, Ms. Thurman. Thank you, I'm sure Jeff would be very flattered that you called him a young fellow, but yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the city, the city hall is uh, an, an, an area that um, the Long Range Plan looked at. Um, it, the Long Range Planning Committee recognized that this was um, a, a very aging facility and they said to the city, you need to do a space utilization study and that was done starting in 2019. An outside firm was brought in. They uh, examined the needs, they looked at the current space, they uh, tried to figure out is there a way to remodel this structurally. That building was built 50 years ago. It really wasn't built to be expanded or enlarged. Um, it's the, the staff has outgrown the space. Um, where what used to be office, what used to be closets are now offices, and what used to be halls are now lined with uh, with boxes and file cabinets. 
So they, they looked at remodeling the current place. They looked at a, an annex across the way um, that would have limited the parking. There were drainage problems and there were power lines everywhere. The final uh, conclusion of this space utilization firm, these architects that we, that we employed was you need to build a new building. And as, as Donald said, uh, this did go out for a vote and the people approved it. This is not instead of other infrastructure needs. The city has a five-year forecast in both the uh, capital fund, I mean in the general fund and the utility fund that includes lots of upgrades in both the uh, roads, uh, new fire truck in 2027, um, all kinds of Im improvements in the water system, expansion of the west water plant that will, the engineering will start this year, it will end up um, in, in two years. These are not going to include uh, increases in your property taxes. The forecasts include funding mechanisms. Um, the bond that was sold for the city center is not instead of improvements to the infrastructure. Our 10 department heads are experts in their department. Jeff uh, Koska has been in this business for 40 years. He's not only a great city manager, he's an expert in water. So I'm very confident in the advice that these very qualified, dedicated department heads have given the city in terms of what the needs are, the plan, they're planned for them, they're funded for them, and this city center is gonna be a, a gathering place for the community. It's not gonna be fancy, it's gonna be functional, it's gonna have room for expansion, but there will also be some walking trails. Hopefully somebody may decide they wanna have a farmer's market there. We will have the city Christmas tree, the city council meets there, the planning and zoning committee, the municipal court meets there. The, the building has lots of uses and I believe that um, it's something that's very much needed in this community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thurman. All right, I'm, I'm gonna be like I am in court. That is respect for the candidates and for everyone trying to listen. Let's all take a moment and check our telephones and silence them. <laughs> or turn them off, all right? I know you didn't mean to, you didn't make the call. <laughs> Someone called you, I get it. But in court, I get to have that phone. The bailiff picks it up and then I give it to you afterwards. But we're not gonna do that here, but please take that just out of respect for the process, if you don't mind. Thank y'all. Let's go to the next question. And this one, alternating candidates, this will be uh, Ms. Thurman's question, and that is, um, do you feel the community is adequately served by its first responders? What would you change, if anything? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yes, ma'am. Do you feel the community is adequately served by its first responders? What would you change, if anything? Well, we have an absolutely outstanding police and fire department. Um, Rocky Wardlow has got years of experience, and we just... Um, I think hired a new police, a new fire chief uh, this week. I'm not sure if that's actually happened. But our fire department, um, the response time, and they cover a huge area. They cover all the way, Blue Lake, Sandy Harbor, and even out on 71, and their response time is four to six minutes. Uh, they usually arrive before the ambulance service, and if any of you have had the experience of the fire department coming to your house, you know they are very, very caring and um, qualified people. The police department, same thing. They are on patrol, two policemen are on patrol 24 hours a day. We have all kinds of um, programs that they will do. If you leave home and you want them to come, they'll come by and check your home every day, go around and check the, 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 uh, the locks, and they'll even take your packages to the police department for you to, until you get home. But they are professional and they are highly trained uh, we haven't had a lot of crime in Horseshoe Bay, and I think there's a reason for that. People know that the Horseshoe Bay Police Department is not going to put up with that, and I, I really am grateful for, the, for these, these people and for the dedication and the bravery that they show for us every day. I think we're very fortunate to have first responders. In terms of the ambulance service, that's not something that the city provides. That's something that is contracted with the a separate taxing authority called the uh, ESD, uh, Emergency Services District. They are the ones who provide the ambulances. They uh, rent space for their ambulances in the um, Horseshoe Bay Fire Department. And, um, and they are, I think they do a great job as well. 
in terms of where there will ever need to be another fire department. Um, we have no plans in our five-year plan for an additional fire department. I know that Marble Falls has got plans um, in Legacy Crossing that there might be an additional fire department that they would provide for all the enormous, enormous growth that Marble Falls is experiencing on their south side of town from uh, Thunder Rock where there are probably going to be 2,000 homes to Greg Ranch to Legacy Crossing where there are going to be at least 1,000 new homes and um, I believe that they probably will put a new fire station there and that will actually relieve us because right now we're covering all that uh, through a mutual aid agreement but we're not collecting property taxes on it. So hopefully some of those uh, calls that we're servicing on Highway 71 will be covered by the Marble Falls Fire Department. I'm very proud of our first responders and you should be too. All right, thank you, Ms. Thurman. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Beeman. Thank you. Uh, how do we feel about, you know, being in the service of the first responders? One question I always would ask everybody is challenge as a team, how can we get better? If you get complacent, you don't look at how you get better. And I would first start, I met with Johnny Campbell. He's the executive director of the Marble Falls area EMS. Uh, he, we're very lucky to have him. He's been there for over 20 years and discussed the needs too, not only of Marble Falls and knowing the growth at Thunder Rock out by the hospital and the Craig Ranch, and I call it the Foxwood Modular Apartments. Within a three mile radius here, within five to seven years, that population could be between 10 to 15,000 people. That's a Marble Falls area issue that's definitely going to require another fire station out there for them to meet minimal response times and, and another EMS unit. But I look at Horseshoe Bay as mayor, my priority is to make sure that our citizens are well protected here in Horseshoe Bay. I would recommend, and speaking too with Johnny Campbell, is the West Fire Station needs some improvement, desperately needed. As we make that improvement, we put the facility there for another EMS unit, which if you live in West at our time off you know, Mountain Leather, Apache Tears, or Lago Escondido, or Blue Lake that they service. Also, trails, that improves response time by well over five minutes to 10 minutes. In EMS time, if you're coming from our central unit, which they do a great job, at five minutes you're critical, basically 10 minutes you're dead. The other important thing we need to do at West is put a squad unit there, because that's normally who gets first responders is our fire department, their EMS units, Another cost saving to our city, if it's just a service call, you can let, let your 911 service know or when you call the city, you need assistance instead of an EMS unit. Every time an EMS unit is dispatched, we're paying more expense. That's, that's a service that we pay for under a contract. So I would propose what's better for our, for our community is also have a squad unit there at the West Fire Station when we rebuild because that's our first line of safety if we have a medical emergency. And those young fellas do a great job in being paramedics. That would be a fantastic for me. Rocky Wardlow is a good friend, retired DPS, Texas Ranger, and we're very fortunate to have him here in our community. Very fortunate. Uh, <clears throat> we have utilities with Rick, great guy. Uh, young fellow that's taken over for Jeff, very happy. Uh, next is the fire chief. We've been real fortunate. The last two, Joe Morris, Brent Battler, have been great. We said if we have a new fire chief coming on board, we haven't met, but I would think his expectations is someone that's going to work and do a great job for our city. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Beeman. The next question, hold on. We're going to save our applause for you, and please. So let's go. This one's going to be first for Mr. Beeman. The both candidates will get a chance to answer, of course. And I'm combining the last host question with one of the audience questions. Um, but there's a lot of debate on city annexation. Um, where do you stand on that? And then for both candidates, again from the audience, describe the pros and cons with annexing. Mr. Beeman goes first. No, that, uh, that, yes, that, you got me this time, right? Yes, sir, you're going first. Okay. Thank you. Uh, annexation is always a hot topic of, of what we have here in Horseshoe Bay and has been. 
I think when the city council has probably had it's been people standing outside the door to get in. It's involved annexation issues. One was Monarch Ridge that we annexed a year and a half ago, roughly. Uh, that's a 309 acre tract that's closer down to Scott and White. It has no connection really to our, to our city at all. The only interest is gonna be off 71. By annexing Monarch Ridge in response time, it would require a third fire station to service the minimal response times required for that. Marble Falls area, you can always work a co-service agreement with them because they already know that there's gonna be another fire station required out there close to the 71, uh, 281 intersection there for minimal response times. So it's, it's always a need. How does it affect our essential services, fire and medical and police? Our, our, currently our closest fire station to that is our central fire station. West doesn't meet it. It's just as far to time to get there to meet essential services. So that, that is one of our other critical issues. When we look at water in our infrastructure that we have right now, that we already have an aging infrastructure that's gonna need a lot of capital improvement. Why are we gonna run another pipeline at five to seven miles further out to treat 309 acres with 350 more homes when we're already talking about water conservation here? I think we have city limits here and what the founders saw of Horseshoe Bay is basically in our current city limits of what Horseshoe Bay is, not going seven miles down the road and annexing another 309 acres. Uh, I felt most of the citizens at that time really uh, were not in favor of that annexation. So I look at our city services, first of all, we've got to protect our current residents with our essential services. And that will always be my first priority as mayor is what is best for our citizens and residents of Horseshoe Bay. That's an obligation the mayor should always have. So, but proper annexation, it, it, it creates uh, a well uh, need, a good need for our community, then those need to be looked at. It's just not a one, one blanket policy fits all, but you have to look at number one, how does it affect our city with essential services and our infrastructure? So uh, each one will be its own unique case, but in the Monarch Ridge, I still don't see where that made sense for the best part of taking care of us as a community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beeman. Ms. Thurman. Well, um, the issue of annexation is a very, a very difficult one. Personally, I would love to put up a fence at uh, 2147 and not let anybody else come in. I would like to not annex anybody else. But the, there is another thing that we have to consider, and that's what happens if we don't annex. Right now, if we have control over areas in our extraterritorial jurisdiction, if we think people are not moving out 71, nobody has driven to Austin lately. So right now, we have the developmental agreements that were put in place when Mayor Jordan was, was the mayor, and this was when the rock crushing discussion was going on. We have agreements with all, almost all of the ranch owners in our ETJ, which is a radius of one mile out from our city. They, uh, once, if they start any development, the city has the right, not the obligation, to annex them. That means we zone them, we limit um, density, we put water restrictions, um, we would collect taxes for the fire protection that we're already providing. If we don't annex, annex them, the, uh, the developmental agreements are no longer valid, and now newly passed House Bill 2038 comes into place. They are allowed to remove themselves from their, our ETJ. They become part of the county. The county has almost no building restrictions. They have no height limitations. They could, there could be another uh, thunder rock there. There could be the prefab apartments that we see in Mega Legacy Crossing. There could be almost anything that, and we would have no control over it. Where are they gonna get their water? Well, Blue Lake has their own water system, Cottonwood Shores has their own water system, but what would be easier is to look to Marble Falls. Marble Falls has their city water at Baylor Scott and White and at Greg Ranch. It would be very easy for them to sell water at probably double the rate, but that would be okay. To these people in our ETJ, we would have no control over what goes on, and this is an issue that is very serious. It's probably my biggest concern I want to appoint a committee 
a long-range planning committee that looks at our ETJ and evaluates what do we want there. Do we want another Bay Country with ran ranchettes? Do we possibly want some medical office buildings that would be complementary to Baylor Scott and White? Do we want uh, a restaurant? Everybody wants a restaurant. That might be something that would work on, in our ETJ, but we need to get ahead of this. We need to plan. We don't want to react because if we let other people make decisions about what happens around Horseshoe Bay, our best interests are not going to be their, what, what they are making their decisions on. So I am very concerned about this issue of our ETJ, and it's something we really need to maintain control over. All right, thank you, Ms. Thurman. Now a few questions from the audience. The first, and it's going to start with you, Ms. Thurman, uh, what past experience and or skill makes you qualified to serve as mayor? Thank you. I think that's a great question. Um, I have spent the last four years working in the city government, and it's very different from private enterprise. I, um, I, I, I led the Long Range Planning Committee. I went to all the city council meetings during that time. So when I actually joined the city council three years ago, I already knew what had been discussed. I knew what the issues were. I've been on the council now for three years. I'm the financial liaison between the city staff and the, um, the council. It's been a great experience. I've really enjoyed it. Getting into the budget, I understand how the tax rates are worked. I understand budgeting uh, issues. I understand the bonds. I've studied the, uh, the, the, the ordinances and the codes. I've talked to department heads. I, I, really, I really have worked hard to understand the workings of this city. I'm the mayor pro tem, which has given me a great opportunity to meet internally with uh, department heads and externally with other decision makers. And as I've told you before, I have a great deal of confidence in our department um, heads. Um, uh, Donald was talking about the, um, the, the West Fire Station. Um, I didn't mention that the West Fire Station is going to be, start, we're going to start upgrading it. Uh, the, it'll, the plans will start this, this, uh, this fall. We're going to expand the fire station in terms of an ambulance. That's not our decision to make. That's the ESD's decision to make. If they decide to put another ambulance out here, we would um, rent them place, a place to house it. But more than likely, they're going to want to put an ambulance closer to all the population that Marble Falls has coming this way. Um, we do have a squad vehicle. We have two squad vehicles that we hope to take delivery on this, uh, maybe this month. Uh, these are going to be fully equipped with all the EMT equipment. Only 5% of the calls that come into the fire department are actually fires. Most of them are medical assistance. So these smaller vehicles will be brush trucks, so they'll have a water tank on them. There'll be less wear and tear on our streets, and um, they'll, have, they'll actually be able to get to the scenes faster than a fire truck. Fire trucks cost $1.3 million, so anything that we can do that lengthens the life of our fire trucks, this is a good thing to do. So I uh, really am very, very optimistic about all of these city services that we, come, that we have coming online, and I, I have great confidence in our staff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thurman. Mr. Beeman. Okay, uh, my experience is to become the next mayor of Horseshoe Bay. As I said earlier, Horseshoe Bay is a home rule city. It has a mayor weak council strong. In the charter, the mayor is responsible for running the business operations of the city and overseeing that with the city manager. That is exactly my role that I've filled the last two years as president of the POA with our executive director having the same duties as the city manager. As a mayor, you do not have a vote on city council. You're, you're there as parliamentary procedure. So with my role that I filled in the 40 years of successful business management, I have managed and grown many companies. I've looked at many budgets and set their budgets with that and made sure their financial, that they were soundly run and conservative based. The same as I think we need to have a city operation and the administration side is always to be looked at and be done in a conservative manner that works the best for the residents of the city. We have, and, and one thing that's been mentioned, the tax rate 
from the city of what we charge, 0.27 per 100, has not changed in three years. Well, in three years, our property taxes, which the city is, that's our primary income source, has gone up 50% that we all pay. In the last year alone, it went up 16%. To me, that's the funds and the money that the city operates on. So I look at even inflation, those other three years, that out of inflation is over 10 times higher than inflation, and last year is basically almost three times higher than inflation that you received in property taxes, not to mention sales tax revenues because of our businesses, which the resort is a very prime asset of what we have in Horseshoe Bay as far as we have in sales taxes. It's a very valuable partner, and that's what we are. We are a partner with the Horseshoe Bay Resort. All of us work together between the city that we have, the decorant, and all POAs. It's say, let's check the egos, let's do what's best for our community and work together. Water conservation is one of the big keys that we have right there as mayor, is that we have a city that has water restrictions in, and we have the, the decorant ACC, certain requirements for grass. That's been left alone for four years. If elected mayor, we will have a monthly meeting of all three of us getting together for our community, doing what is best for our community that makes common sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beamer. So, now this question, Mr. Beamer, you get to answer first. I'm gonna combine it, there's, there's a couple of questions in here, so the, the folks who wrote it, they're gonna hear a little bit of both of theirs, but, um, and I don't live here, just for the record, you know that, both of y'all know that. But, but this person says, I believe I live in a great town. Uh, what do you believe are the three major issues facing the city? And then what do you propose are the solutions? Is it me? I no, think it's me. It's Mr. Beeman. Yeah, three major issues or problems that the, the card writer says problems. And what do you propose are the solutions? Okay, um, we'll go for, uh, we do live in a great city. That's why we moved here and it has grown. But I look at, uh, and when you ask for the three, three top that just right off I'll go is number one is infrastructure. We do have an aging infrastructure that's gonna take major capital improvements for where we live. As I mentioned earlier, how many people in the West have had low water pressure or times no water pressure at all? So with that and that expense right there, we do definitely need to have a solid investment in infrastructure to get us caught up with the population growth that we've had in the last four years. With that said too, that comes in with water, part of the infrastructure that we have. We need to do all we can with, with our infrastructure and water to make sure we are the best conservationists of water that we can be. Because unless we get rain, and, and we learn to pray for rain in the agricultural side of the business, that's where our water comes from in the watershed of Lake Buchanan. So that's a primary concern that we'll always have. When Lake Buchanan's full, it's 1,020 feet. Right now, I think it's, a, it's at 45% capacity and we're around 960 on, on Lake Buchanan, but it's operating like it should. Next would be traffic that we have, because as we have increased population, 2147 is a state highway. We need to bring TxDOT in, and they are a great organization, and let them explain and show what is the safest thing and the best way for us to make 2147 as safe as possible. And, our, uh, and one that we also have is responsible growth. All the lots, we have over 2,000 lots in the current city limits of Horseshoe Bay. Everybody that's owned those lots, some people for 40 plus years, have a right to build a home. So we need to look at that growth that people do have, a, a, a legal right, the city, there, there's nothing the city can do to stop that. So let's make sure that we have responsible growth, that we can handle that growth of the possibility of 2,000 homes. Tuscan Village, which is another great product here in, in Horseshoe Bay, just finished phase two. That's another 100 more lots. Phase three is 100. So that's 200 more homes in Tuscan Village 
not to mention south, which is primarily mobile homes, we have another 500 more lots up there, and that's the most affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beeman. Ms. Thurman. Thank you. Well, I would, uh, I would say I agree that the three big issues are water, growth, and traffic. Um, water, the, uh, we've, we've done a great job in conserving water, but 70% of the water that our uh, city processes goes to landscaping. So while the city has been in stage two water conservation for six years, that's gonna, that's gonna continue. I wanna work with the LCRA to encourage them to put pressure on our neighbors to join us in water conservation efforts. Um, in terms of our infrastructure, we have the number, we have the oldest water plant that we have is from 2006. It's state-of-the-art technology. Um, in 2017, we upgraded the west water plant to the membrane tra technology. And over the last um, 50 years, there has been a systematic asset management plan where we continue to upgrade and improve all of the infrastructure of our water system and our wastewater system. And uh, next year, we're gonna put a, uh, uh, we're gonna create some redundancy in the pipe system, and there's gonna be a lot of money spent next year to um, protect the, the pipes going from the central water plant up to, cent to the, the, um, the summit tower. The growth is uh, something that we all are concerned about. We cannot stop it. We can control it. We'll continue to limit spec building permits to two. Um, anytime the city council has had an opportunity to downzone a property from a more um, heavily populated um, zoning to a less populated area, they've taken advantage of it. But, but what we have to do is make sure that the quality of the housing that comes here is, is complementary to Horseshoe Bay because this is our home. Most of us, our home is our most valuable asset and we wanna protect the value of our home. So production builders that want to come in and buy, just build a whole bunch of houses fast and get away, they don't fit in our community and that's the kind of thing that we will be working to be sure that the quality of homes that are built here are complementary. Traffic is a huge issue. If the, when the Warts Dam Bridge goes in, and it's not an if, the city has been working for three years and we're, we're very, working very hard with Joe Muck and the TxDOT people to make sure that that bridge does not stop at 2147. We can't take any more traffic on 2147. I think we have a plan in place that we're gonna be able to work with the developers who own property between 2147 and 281. They find it beneficial to go ahead and continue that road and we hope we're not gonna quit fighting for that until we get that agreement in place. These are issues that are ongoing. They're not gonna be solved today. They're gonna to be issues that the, the city and the staff have to be working with for years to come. And um, I really want to provide the leadership to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thurman. Uh, this question starts with you, ma'am. And there will be a follow-up question to this uh, by a different person by their handwriting, but let's, let's ask this one first. As shown on the city website, Horseshoe Bay has received much recognition for excellence in small city government. As mayor, what would you do to ensure that such excellence continues? Well, indeed we have. I just got back from the Texas Municipal League Conference on Friday, and um, you may or may not know this, but we were just awarded the most scenic city in Texas award for 2023. We're very proud of that. Um, we've been awarded for our efforts in water conservation from the Scenic River uh, Awards. We've been awarded financial transparency awards from the Texas Comptroller's Office. The, the, these are things that we can be proud of and we need to continue to do this. I think that it's important for the, the city council to support all of the departments in their efforts to, um, to, to provide excellence for our citizens. It, it protects our property values. It makes Horseshoe Bay the place that we chose to be. I think that what I would do in terms of mayor is just keep doing what we're doing. Um, I think we're on a very good path. The idea that our city is on the wrong, is, in the, is going in a wrong direction, I don't understand that. I think everybody who came here choose, chose to be here 
we find very good things that are going on in the city. And I think that we have much to be proud of, and this is just going to continue to get better and better and better as we work together. This is your city. This is not my city. It's not my agenda. It's your agenda. We need to work together. If you come to me and say, I have a complaint, I have a problem, I'm going to listen to you. I really am. But I'm going to say, what do you think the solution is? Because you have to be part of the solution. You have to own the city as much as the six volunteer city council and mayors, the, the, the mayor and the five council members are. We're just volunteers, and we're trying to represent your interest, but we will continue to do that and make this city the great place we all came to. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thurman. Uh, Mr. Beeman. Okay, uh, recognition of a city. Well, I would look in the first question too, and I know we have a great city, but as I always say that you don't get complacent, how can we get better? And being as a, as a mayor, our top priority and my priority is being looking and being in charge of the city operations, working with the city manager, is how do we get more efficient with what we do? Look at contracts that we have. What are we overpaying on contracts? That's what I've done my entire life, is with working with businesses and looking at contracts and making sure we're the most efficient, well-run city from an administrative side. It's always never getting complacent with you know, our police and fire protection. How do we come better with that and working as a team? Same as EMS, working each one that we work to get the most efficient and the best that we can be by not getting complacent. The scenic city, which is great and it's a ward, but what makes our scenic city is the community and the people living here. You know, we are the ones that set the quality of standard of life for us not someone in Austin that's a graduate student that sets what a scenic city should be. So we as ourselves and what the city does in the same regard, the POAs to all work, our, make sure our community is a, is a place that we live and love and proud of. That's because we all work together to make that. And that's very important. Water conservation is part of one of the big things that you would be as, as, as we see as a mayor. And, and right off, as I say, we have an ACC that has one set of guidelines that they want for landscaping. We have the city that has another regulation, and I agree that we conserve our water. We're on stage two. But at stage two, it, there's X, X amount of heat in the summer that the grass isn't going to make it. We need to look at other options that do allow more natural landscaping and work together. That's where the city in the last four years hasn't done that at all. When we talk water conservation, that would be a top priority is having the city and the decorant and the POAs all work together to get us updated to where we need to be to actually can save water. That it is so important that we do that. That's one top priority that, that I would say as a city that we have got to get on and work together to solve that issue. So with, with us in here as a city, I'm proud to be a resident of Horseshoe Bay. I love our community, and it's our job, if elected mayors, to listen and serve the residents of Horseshoe Bay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beeman. And this question will start with you, Mr. Beeman. And it's kind of a follow-up, but since give you a little bit more time to expand if you need to. Since the mayor does not have a vote on matters before the council, except to break a tie, what do you anticipate your contribution will be to the governance of the city if you are elected mayor? Okay. Okay, as we said, the mayor, it's a mayor, mayor weak council strong. We, with the vote and with the odd number of council members, it's hard to have a tie. I don't know unless someone's not there. Uh, to make a vote on an odd number, I, I never see that you're going to have a tie unless someone's not present. And if you're a council member and it's an important issue, I would expect that you would be there to vote. That's your job as a council member and what you were elected to do. The mayor's job is to, to, to go ahead and run the parliamentary procedure of the, of the, of the monthly council meeting. And as far as influencing, 
you know, I have my thoughts of what we need to be as a very conservative management of what we have of our, of our city government and always look at that, look at our essential services, but it's part of working together as a team. So from that is the importance of, of being, uh, as the mayor, it's actually, you know, too, working as a team builder. But I don't see if everybody's present when you have an odd number that you're gonna have a tie vote there that for the mayor. But if I need to make a, make a decision, then it'll be made always with the best interest of the community based on the primary reason. Is it best for our community? Is it safe for our community? And does it work for the majority of our community? Because nothing's gonna be out there for council that's ever easy when you're making big decisions. There's always gonna be X number of folks that have an opinion. So you always take to me what is what is the majority of the folks in our community and the residents really want, whether it's my personal thought or not, you have to listen to the majority and, and look and, and go that way primarily, but is it safe and is it, is, is it a functional decision for us? So as that as a mayor, uh, if, I, if I get into that role of, of having to break a tie, then, I'll, then I can do that based on good sound business principles and what is the best for Horseshoe Bay and the residents in Horseshoe Bay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beeman. Ms. Thank Carmen. you. Thank you. Um, my contribution to, um, the, as, as mayor, would be um, my experience. I have uh, served on the council. I um, am very familiar with the procedures and what goes on. The fact that the mayor doesn't have a vote, it, it's true, but the mayor has a lot of, of, of control over the agenda. The mayor sets the agenda. The council um, sets the policies and the budget. And the mayor's job is to make sure that we communicate with the citizens. It's to make sure that the council members have the information that they need to make good decisions. And I think that um, I'm in a good position to do that. Our, our staff is outstanding and they are very good at answering questions. I will encourage council members to ask the questions that they need so that they can make informed decisions. Um, I think the other thing that I bring to the table here is my established relationships with the people that are, make, that are out, outside decision makers in our city, um, other mayors and uh, the TxDOT people, county, county officials, um, it's very, the mayor is the, the face of the city in, in our uh, greater community, in the state legislature. And I think that that is something that I will contribute. Um, I, I know that my relationship with the council members, I see many of them here tonight, is, uh, is very uh, strong. I really enjoyed working with these people. Um, I call previous mayors a lot. Um, I, um, I have them on speed dial. And I think it's important as uh, the mayor or the, count, as the council member that I, that I understand the historic reference of everything that becomes before the city council. And I've worked very hard to do that. And I will continue to do that as the leader of the community because we don't want to make the same mistakes that we made before. It's important to have the context going forward and I will be able to do that. Um, yes, it is our community, it is your community, it is your agenda, and as the mayor, I will put that forth. So I um, really look forward to this opportunity. It's been a real pleasure for me to be on the council for the last three years and to serve you. Um, I'm, a positive, I'm a positive person, I have a positive attitude towards things, and I really, really, really enjoy working with our excellent staff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thurman. This, uh, this question will start with you, ma'am, and um, it reads, how does your vision for the city of Horseshoe Bay differ, if it does, from the current administration, and what changes would, in direction would you hope the city took under your leadership? Um, I don't know that my vision for the city uh, varies from any of the previous three mayors that led the city. Um, all three of them, uh, we've been a city for 18 years, and I think that the direction that our city has gone has just grown and improved 
and I believe it will continue to do that. We have new challenges that are coming up that are coming up that partly have been faced before, but are going to even become more important as the expansion on 271, uh, Marble Falls expansion comes this way. So what I will continue to do is try to limit growth, try to control growth, try to direct growth so that it's complementary to Horseshoe Bay. Um, I will continue to support our staff. I will continue to um, put forth my very uh, conservative fiscal management um, um, approach to everything. I will continue to focus on the budget. Um, yes, our tax rate is the lowest of any tax rate in the Highland Lakes area, and our debt to capita uh, ratio, uh, per capita ratio, is the lowest of anyone in the Highland Lakes area. We have excellent city services, and if we are going to reduce the, uh, the income that the city has, something's got to give. So services will have to be reduced, and I'm not in favor of doing that. My vision for Horseshoe Bay is that we want to make it better. Um, I think that there is lots of room for improvement. Um, there's not anything that I would say is bad right now, but with growth, there are going to be new challenges. There are going to be new things that we have to face, and we have to just be ready for it. We have to prioritize, make strategies for these things before they become problems. We have to plan. I don't want to react. So that would be what I hope we can do, is plan for the future and not be in a, a situation where we're reacting to problems. Um, we have a lot of good people in the community that have volunteered to be on committees, and I will continue to, to pull in these people and ask their opinions, because you, you people have got amazing, amazing experience, and I would be foolish not to take advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Beeman. How's our vision? I think we all are pretty similar in our vision of Horseshoe Bay, that we all want a safe community, that we enjoy living, that here together we want this basic quality essential services that we can count on as we age, with this be our medical, fire, and police. I think we can always work and strive to be better with that, what we do to serve our community. But the question is, is how do you execute the operation of the city to accomplish this? And myself, from coming from the private side of the business sector with the years of management, I think I'm very well qualified to run the business side of the city and oversee that with the city manager and help mentor him because his, Jeff's a great person. And he's worked here with the Horseshoe Bay and been in council meetings over 10 years ago with Jeff and putting in the membrane system. A lot of those decisions were made in 2012, 2014, I believe. So our purification system is wa of water is very sound. But one of our big things that we need to do in the, in the execution of the city is our infrastructure and the delivery system because it is aging and it needs a lot of work and improvement to that to make sure that we meet the needs in the next three to five years with the projected growth that we have here and the growth that we've had in the last three, four years. So with, with my experience, it's, a, it's a more about the execution of how we accomplish those goals that we all have the vision of what we really want here in, in Horseshoe Bay is our safety and quality of life and getting to enjoy a time because we're all blessed to be here and very fortunate to be here in Horseshoe Bay but it's all with running and how you manage the city operations to be the most efficient, effective way to serve all residents of Horseshoe Bay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beeman. And alternating, this will be your question first, Mr. Beeman, and it's, I'm gonna combine two of the cards. Apologies to those who wrote them, but I think they kind of go hand in glove. Horseshoe Bay is going to grow, like it or not, how do you plan to control and direct the growth? And then two, how will you ensure that Horseshoe Bay does not get overdeveloped like Lakeway did? Okay, thank you. Okay, growth is always a hot topic for, for any community. And the more desirable we make our community 
for the residents here with our services and, and the safety and the beauty of our community. We're going to create people wanting to be coming and be part of our community. So growth is, is going to be something of our own that we create because of making a desirable community that we already have. The, the control that you can use too is, is naturally you don't let any mass builders come in where you have a lot of spec homes. Most of the folks coming to Horseshoe Bay are really building in custom homes. They're not first time buyers and they've got the capital and the equity where they're not coming out for a mortgage. And that's another big plus is that you don't have a lot of homes here of people trying to get their first home and mortgage because Horseshoe Bay is not the cheapest place to come buy a home. Uh, one of the other ways is to control our growth is limit the high density housing, which is R6. That's the condominiums and apartments. We really don't need any more high density housing here. That's a city council. When anything's looked at and zoned, they're the ones that look at and zone and make any kind of changes. My thought with ETJ, that's a, normally in a city of our size of less than 5,000 5, people. It's only a half a mile uh, is all you go out in at ETJ. We've gone out five to seven miles in our ETJ. And just because a, a property is in our ETJ, if someone wants to come in and develop it, the council can restrict the zoning of that property. So that's a major influence that the council has over anybody because there's voluntary and there's involuntary annexation. If I'm coming in and want to be a builder and put in a you know, 300 acre development, then I would want the city to voluntarily annex me so that I don't have to spend millions and millions of dollars working with TECQ to get your own water district or where you're gonna try and buy you know, water from. Because the city of Horseshoe Bay also is a bulk water seller. We sell water to Oak Ridge and through Aquatex and we also sell water to Deer Haven which is uh, their own water district, but they buy their bulk water from the city of Horseshoe Bay. Uh, Blue Lake is its own mud, Lano County Mud One, and they have, to, they have all the same regulations of TCQ for their water that they do, but we also take all the wastewater from Blue Lake, which we have the capability over our plant to do that. So <laughs> with growth, I think there is a way to manage, and it's city council's job primarily to be our first line of defense to have proper growth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beeman. Ms. Thurman. Yes, well, uh, your city is going to grow. And um, Texas is a property rights state, so there's there, you can't stop people from enjoying using their property. Um, Horseshoe Bay West was started in 1980. It's 43 years old. It's about 35% built out. Uh, the summit was approved 16 years ago. So this takes a long time for these properties to, to fill out. However, the city did an impact fee study last fall, uh, last uh, this summer, and it basically took into effect all of the possible growth that might come to the Horseshoe Bay area within the next 10 years. It predicted the infrastructure needs, it predicted uh, the water needs, it predicted anything that was gonna affect Horseshoe Bay, and we actually voted to increase those impact fees by about 35% this last year. Um, in terms of the voluntary or involuntary annexation, involuntary annexation basically went away with House Bill 2038 because if somebody doesn't want to be annexed into our city, they can just remove themselves from their ETJ. The, uh, the areas that I referred to with the, with the uh, contractual developmental agreements, this is voluntary annexation because they voluntarily signed those agreements. Um, we have direct control over the areas in our ETJ and I think that's something that we really need to consider. Um, in terms of the growth that we're experiencing in 2022, we had 223 new building permits issued and this year we've had about 150. Uh, last two years ago, you didn't see any for sale signs. Now every weekend you see um, house open signs and for sale signs. So the trend has already slowed down, but it's not something that we need to take for granted. It's something that we need to stay ahead of. Uh, we need to monitor the growth. We need to 
um, uh, certainly not going to approve any production builders. That's something that the, horse, the Horseshoe Bay has not, uh, is not in favor of. We, we turned down a development out on 71 recently because they wanted to uh, come in and just build a bunch, you know, uh, I won't even use the name of the company, but a production style building. And th that's not complimentary to what we need here and what we want here. So my vision for this city is that we will continue to be a high quality city where the property values that we are um, very uh, concerned about are maintained by limiting the growth and the quality of the, of the construction that comes here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thurman. Got a few more cards left. We're going to go over time, so apologies. And I want to give the candidates some time for closing remarks as well. So okay. we'll do that after these last three questions. So this one will be for Ms. Thurman to answer first. Are you for or against the multi-use trail and why? Well, I'm for it, and uh, the reason is this is something that was asked for in the long-range plan. Uh, Fifty years ago, when this city was founded, people did not walk, ride their bikes, ride their golf carts everywhere, but if you go out there right now, you'll see people on golf carts. So it's not safe. Um, the city recognizes that it's not safe, and the city needs to do something about it. We appointed a uh, transportation committee last December, and shortly after the transportation committee, and by the way, these are really, really smart people. Um, uh, there are several of them in this room. Mark Blaschock is a former TxDOT employee. Kelly Katz, who's the chairman of the committee, is uh, an engineer uh, with HDR Engineering, and they have looked at um, all the traffic and transportation options. But this shared use path was a, a grant opportunity that came up um, that really fitted what we were trying to do, which is, per, which is reduce the traffic on the roads and provide safe ways for people to get around. The, uh, the idea is to have a golf cart or a multi-use trail that basically goes from the Caprock Clubhouse to, Bay, to uh, the Bay Gross, Bayside Grocery, uh, from um, uh, Lucy Lane over to the Yacht Club facilities. Um, this $10 million grant, we'll find out in sometime this month whether we got it. I don't know that we will, but if we don't, we're not going to use taxpayer dollars for this, this, for this project. However, this grant comes around every two years, so what we'll do is we will have a debriefing with TxDOT and we'll say what was not good about the grant, what, what could we have done to, to do better, and we'll go for it again um, in two years. Uh, this is something that the citizens have asked for. Uh, last year, we put a, um, a, a walking trail or a bike, a, a bike trail along Horseshoe Bay Boulevard. I was there this morning. I walked on it. People walk there. They ride their golf carts there. The, the, the cars respect it. Um, our budget this year includes putting a similar trail on Bay West Boulevard. But that's not enough. We need to do more in terms of providing safe traffic um, transmission around our town so that people who are walking, who are going on their golf carts, don't have to worry about the workmen um, who are on their cell phones and driving through our community too fast. Our police department is going to continue to enforce the speed limits, but I do support the shared use path and the transportation committee who will be making their report to the city council probably in November. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Beeman. Okay, for or against? Well, with a shared use path, and as we look at the shared use path, of anything that improves the quality of life in our city of Horseshoe Bay for our residents in the city of Horseshoe Bay, I completely support it. Without fail, without doubt, if it improves the quality of life of our residents and gives us more options, I'm going to be always 100% for it. That is basically a, a very easy, easy answer. Now, when you come to these things and look at decisions, is safety. Number one, when we have TxDOT, their first mission statement is safety. There's one really brilliant person at TxDOT that's been many years. Well, their second thing on, state, on their mission statement, I can't remember, but it's safety. So number one, we need to look at safety when we do look at anything of, of a shared use path. If it benefits quality of life, and then you check off, is it safe? Then we move full steam ahead with it. So to me, that is a very 
basic question. If it benefits our quality of life, then it's an easy decision. With what we do have, you know, there at a town hall meeting that we had at City Hall, and a very good question from a gentleman that's lived here for a long time, and when they were explaining the plan and he asked them to explain it in a very good question in a very respectful way, when they couldn't explain the overall plan, his answer was back very respectfully, how can I support your plan if you can't explain it? Because it'd just be going to the bank and trying to get a business loan and you don't have your business plan put together but you're asking for a loan. How do you expect to get a loan? So it's one that needs a lot more uh, detailed out, a lot more explanation, but if it improves our life and our quality here, I'm all in, I mean, in, in being safe. Where I do know we have excellent opportunities too is we have two wonderful hiking trails that can really be expanded upon for the folks that do like to hike in our natural beauty here, and that's the Slick Rock Creek Trail and the Horseshoe Creek and the Horseshoe Creek Trail. There, God paves a beautiful canvas. There, those could be very well expanded and merged together and really create a unique experience for those that really want to just have an extra option for hiking here and improve that. But as far as anything that would improve the quality of life as a mayor and a resident of Horseshoe Bay, I'm all in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beeman. And you will answer this question first. Do you anticipate being involved in city governance on a daily basis, either in person or remotely? If so, what issues will you be addressing most often? I guess it's a priority question. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I will go as, as running and, if, and being elected mayor, then if I'm not willing to be involved in the city government and the operation of the city, I shouldn't be sitting up here because I'm volunteering to serve and I know the expectations and responsibilities as being elected mayor, that is to serve the city and the residents of Horseshoe Bay, and that's not just on a part-time basis. I feel that as a mayor, to really work with the city manager, that I will be there at 8 a.m. in the morning, and if he has questions and to help mentor him, because I have had plenty of years of experience of developing managers and working with multiple departments. So, uh, this is something that I'm doing as a commitment for the folks because we like Horseshoe Bay and I have a deep, deep belief that to serve our community. So I will be involved as, as a mayor in our overall operations of the city and be accountable because every resident in Horseshoe Bay will be my boss. I mean, that's who I've got to listen to and a responsibility to be there and work for all the residents in Horseshoe Bay. I don't have um, any, any agenda. I don't pick a side, don't choose a team. I work for the residents in the city of Horseshoe Bay fairly and impartially. But I do take the, the commitment, just as I have on the Horseshoe Bay POA, not for something as a resume filler, but to work and serve every resident in our community equally and fairly and with respect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Ms. Thurman. Uh, we have a city council, city manager form of government. It's the city manager's job to run the government. I would not go to the city offices every day. It would be incredibly disruptive, I believe, for me to try to go, and um, the staff wouldn't know whether they're supposed to answer to me or, or Jeff Koska. I always go through Jeff Koska. That's his job to manage the city staff, not mine. I have a lot of responsibilities as mayor. I lead the council, I am the representative for the city out in the community and out in the greater community, but I would definitely not show up at city council, I mean at the, at the, 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 the city offices every day. For one thing, there's no place for me to sit. Um, there, there's, there's, not an empty, there's not an empty desk there. We've had three mayors in this city, none of them have done that because it's not appropriate. Jeff Koska doesn't need my mentoring. Jeff Koska has taught me a lot, and, um, and I really, um, I have great faith in him, and the staff has great faith in Jeff. In 2021, the turnover rate of our city was 21%. This last year, our turnover rate was under 2%. 
that says something very positive about the, the confidence that the staff has, how happy they are with the, with the way things are going, and it saves us a lot of money. It's expensive to hire people and replace them. So I definitely am not gonna interfere with a system that's working well. I certainly will meet with Jeff frequently. I'll meet with other department heads if I need to. I work at home a lot. I study things a lot. Um, you probably will get an e email from me at five o'clock in the morning sometimes. Andy can tell you I, I get up way too early and I pay way too much attention to this. It's a volunteer job, but I uh, approach it the same way that I do everything. When I jump into something, I jump into it with all my, all my heart and all my soul, and that's, the, that's what I've done for the last four years for this city. Um, but as far as showing up there every day, no. Thank you, ma'am. And this will be for you, Ms. Thurman. <clears throat> what is your biggest concern for the future of the city? Well, as I said before, my, my biggest concern is the expansion that I see coming along Highway 71. Um, I, I think it's um, something that we really all need to pay attention to, and we need to um, be very proactive in managing this growth and making sure that we have control over what happens. As I said, I'm gonna appoint a committee to, 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 to make proactive decisions for what will happen there. Um, we've just got to, we've got to look ahead and see all the challenges and opportunities that are coming towards the city. There are probably <coughs> things that are gonna come up for the city that I don't even know about, that we can't predict right now. But in terms of um, how we're gonna be moving forward I'm gonna be relying heavily on the staff. Um, we have great emergency management plans. We have a book that's probably six inches thick for predicting everything that can come up in the city. Um, I'm not really concerned about a tornado, but if there's a tornado, everybody on the staff knows what they need to do. My biggest concern though remains the, the, the expansion that we see coming, that we have no control over, what's happening in Marble Falls, the expansion of their city that's coming to our ETJ area, and um, I just think we just really, really need to be conscientious and make sure that we're controlling the expansion on 71. Thank you, Ms. Thurman. Mr. Beeman. Megan's concerns, one would be growth that we would have and make sure we have responsible growth that, that benefits our city and our residents of Horseshoe Bay, such as an assisted living and memory health care, which I think that is on the books and that's very important of what we need. So having the right and proper kind of growth, that's very important to us as a city and our residents here at this age. And uh, the second that I would look and put on is that uh, I've mentioned several times is infrastructure and water. That is a major issue that we have in Horseshoe Bay with a 50-year-old infrastructure. That is something that is gonna be at a top level that we need to pay attention to in water conservation. In the past four years, I think there's things that, that we should have met together with the decorant, the city, and the POAs to really get on the same page and solve the problem. That is a, a, a key issue that we have, water and infrastructure both. Uh, we have also a, another key factor we say is, is safety and traffic. They go hand in hand. That's why you want to have TxDOT come in here, a state highway, and without any biases or special interests, let them get in front of us and explain what will make 2147 the safest way possible. When you talk about ETJ and 71, just because someone's in our ETJ and we annex them, doesn't mean we have to give them water. That is not a requirement. And I'm a big property rights person as a landowner and a rancher too that we have, but if you don't give water and all the regulations to get a water district is almost impossible. Marble Falls is water is tied up. Our Horseshoe Bay water, let's make sure we have it for our residents of Horseshoe Bay and protect our citizens right now that live here and growth that can happen inside our city limits. Because ETJ, it is right in the same way where it can be voluntary or involuntary, but one of the keys there 
with ETJ, if you do annex, you do not have to give water. That is not a requirement. And if someone has to come out and try and get their own water district with TCQ, the millions and millions of dollars would make it almost in, insurmountable to build and be, have any kind of affordable homes with that. So that, that is one of our key issues that I would look, and I think as a council, that's up to them to be able to zone. The mayor can definitely steer the direction and be the influence and represent the city, and, and that is the, the key function that my standards, I always hold myself to a higher level of accountability and working for the citizens of Horseshoe Bay and represent our city in a very professional manner that will be respectful to all. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Beeman. Ms. Thurman. Oh, wait. I think I answered that. You yeah. answered that one. <laughs> I went first that time, yeah. I was about to get in trouble, okay. I can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I wanna, let's go, can y'all put two minutes on there? I wanna give each candidate a chance to have some closing remarks. They'll each get uh, two minutes, and since I started with ladies first, I think it's appropriate that Mr. Beeman uh, get first. Um, Whichever you call, Judge, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you're the judge. Yeah, for, from my perspective, it, it, it doesn't matter either way, but if you want to go, I'll let you go first, Mr. Beeman. That's fine. Thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> As mayor of Horseshoe Bay, I will re represent all residents of our city. I will be fair, impartial and will not promote any special interest. I propose a monthly meeting between the city, the decorant, and all POAs. We have to work together to be effective, productive, and beneficial for our community. Working together as a team is a must, and we can do that. Let's check our egos at the door and do what's best for our community and all of us get together because we can solve, working as a team, every and any issue that we have as a city. Because remember, we're a community and we all want to work together to make it the best. And, we, and I appreciate y'all's time tonight. And I would be remiss to say without your vote, or with your vote, I will be the next mayor of Horseshoe Bay and I will ask for your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bennett and Ms. Thurman. I want to thank my supporters. Um, I want to thank Mary Daniels, who keeps me organized. I want to thank the many wonderful people who have helped me in this campaign. I want to thank my husband. I want to thank the many friends, and I want to thank you for your prayers that have helped me face each day. I want to thank each of you for being here tonight to take part in this discussion. What I offer you is no small investment. I didn't just wake up one day and decide to be mayor. I have worked very hard over the last four years, and I have given up much time with my friends and family. I've worked hard learning the intricacies of the city. I have studied the budget. I've studied the ordinances. I've worked hard on the council. Um, I have a deep commitment to this city. Um, I understand the complexities of the, comp of the public finances, and I go way beyond the two to 300 page um, report that we get every month for our council meeting. What I offer you is experience, qualifications, and a depth of knowledge specifically for this job. The health of our city is important to all of us. It affects our property values. It affects the way of life that we've all come to to, ex to expect and to, and to receive here. I am not just willing to lead, I have proven that I can and will do the job. I don't have a bone to put with, pick with anybody. I want this city to be welcoming to all the people. I believe that working together, we can all be friends and neighbors. We have much more in common than we have differences. I'm committed to invest, continue to invest myself in this community, but I cannot do it without you. I need your vote. Early voting starts on October 23rd. I would really appreciate your support. I love this city. I love the quality of life, and I believe together we can all make it better. Thank right. you so much. Thank you, ma'am. All right, I want to... I want to commend and congratulate 
I want to commend and congratulate both candidates. It is not easy to run for public office. It's not easy to put yourself out there. It's not only a brave thing. Some people may say it's a crazy thing, especially volunteers. It is. You know. it is. I agree <laughs> with that. But I want to commend both of you all, and I was going to ask for a round of applause for both candidates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.